more than anything over the last 25 years I've been asked what reptile makes the best pet and I've covered this a handful of times in snake bites but I'm going to go in depth and give you the pros and cons to what I feel are the best reptile pets in this week in this week's episode oh, I'm going to do this again and when I do it again we're gonna have a different type of situation. Over the last 25 years, the question I've get asked more than anything else is what reptiles make the best pets? And I've certainly covered this before in Snake Bites TV's episodes, but today I'm gonna to get in depth with what I think are the best pets for reptiles and give you the pros and cons to why I think they're such awesome animals. Let's start with the corn snake. When it comes to snakes, corns are probably one of the best pets, no doubt. These guys are native to the southeast part of the United States. They typically get about four to five foot and they're just really placid animals. One of the things that's really great is that they're so captive bred and there's so many paint jobs to them that you can find almost anything to meet your needs, as well as the fact that they're relatively good at handling and they certainly eat frozen food extremely well. Let's go ahead and look at the pros and the cons. Feeds readily on frozen thawed rodents. Stays a nice size. Easy to care for. Lots of colors to choose from. Small as babies. Slightly squirmy as babies. Certainly over the last two decades, the ball python has probably been one of the most popular pet snakes in the pet trade. Now these guys are native to West Africa and typically the three countries they come out of are Togo, Ghana, and Benin. What happens there is they collect wild caught gravid females, they bring them into a facility, they let them lay their eggs, and they captive hatch them. Now in the past there's been up to 100,000 babies that have been exported out of West Africa into the pet trade, both in Europe and in the United States. Now fortunately, over the last 10 to 12 years, there's been a tremendous amount of captive breeding within the European community and the American community, really relieving the stress on those farms over in West Africa. Now they're supposed to release the females back into the wild, basically making a sustainable farming situation. But thankfully, the numbers have reduced down to probably sub 20,000 coming out of West Africa because of the amount of captive breeding that have happened over over in Europe and in America. Now that's where a lot of the color mutations have really cropped up. Certainly they originated in West Africa in many cases, but captive breeding has continued to combine different color mutations, making ball pythons not only a great pet snake, but also one of the most colorful snakes in the pet trade. Big, but not too big. Easily handled snake. Easy care and setup. Lots of paint jobs. Don't move a lot. Some think boring. Picky feeders. Boa constrictors are often thought of that next step to keeping a large snake. So if you have experience with corn snakes and ball pythons and smaller snakes, but you want to start getting into the bigger animals, boa constrictors are obviously the next step in that process. Now they come from Central and South America, depending on the species, but the common boa constrictor is really a Colombian animal. And they typically get anywhere from six foot to eight foot, males staying a little smaller and females getting a little bigger. They're a live bearing snake and have been bred since basically people have been keeping reptiles. Now there are a, a tremendous amount of color mutations, so there's a lot to choose from. These guys are really the placid of the big snakes. They're super easy to handle, super great animals, and again, it was one of my very first snakes. It's not something I recommend people starting out with, but truly, if you want to get into something bigger, they're a great option. Let's take a look at the pros and cons. Great handling snakes. Easy husbandry. Big, but not too big. Many color mutations to choose from. Still a pretty large snake. Leopard geckos are certainly thought of as the number one pet lizard, and there's good reason for that. They're really easy to care for them. They come in a ton of different colors, and they're just a great starter lizard because of their ease of care. Now, they come from India and Pakistan, but they've been captive bred for the last couple decades in large numbers. So it's very easy to get a captive bred and captive hatched animals. And really, they hardly ever import them anymore, to be honest with you. And with numbers being produced in the hundreds of thousands 
thousands of years, there's certainly no need for that. Now again, they don't get really large, and they're typically pretty good at handling. They're a little squirmy when they're babies, but as they get bigger, you can see they become extremely placid. These guys will have two eggs at a time, and they can have up to four to five clutches per year. So they're a highly productive animal, and that's why you see so many of them out there. Again, when you're first getting into reptiles and you want a pet lizard, a leopard gecko is a great choice. But let's take a look at the pros and the cons. Super easy to care for. Hardy and tolerates handling well. Loads of paint jobs to choose from. Easy setup. Takes time to get used to handling. Needs to be fed live insects. Small and slightly delicate as babies. The bearded dragon would certainly be the other pet lizard that most people say you should start with. The thing that's nice about bearded dragons as opposed to leopard geckos is that they're extremely great handling animals. Leopard geckos can become good handling animals, but it does take some work. Whereas bearded dragons are just kind of naturally tame and just really great animals. I mean, this guy, little Fetty Wap here, is one of my pets and he is just absolutely amazing. You can literally set him on your shoulder or set him on your head and walk around with him and he'll just sit there and hang out with you. Now what's nice about them too is that they don't eat just live crickets. Now you can feed them roaches and crickets and even superworms, but they'll also eat vegetation. They're omnivores and as they get older they move more towards vegetables and less away from live food. So bearded dragons are really a great option if you want a really great handling animal that wants to just hang out with you all day. Now there are some downsides to it. The fact that you have to keep them a lot warmer so the setup is a little bit more costly than say a leopard gecko. And they do take a little bit more work when it comes to cleaning and so on like that, but these are absolutely a great pet lizard, and if you want something that's just gonna be totally chill, bearded dragons are your best option. Great handling pets. Readily feed on bugs and veggies. Gets big, but not too large. Easy setup. They feed a lot. Need to be cleaned frequently. More expensive setup than a leopard gecko. Need high heat for hot spot. A lizard that certainly doesn't get nearly enough consideration for being an awesome pet would be a blue tongue skink. As a matter of fact, they're native to Australia and Indonesia. And in Australia, when you ask someone what the best pet lizard is, typically they'll tell you that a blue tongue skink is the way to get started. Now these guys are omnivores as well, but the thing that's really nice about them is that they'll typically eat cat food or dog food. So you don't have to feed them live bugs. Although they will eat live bugs and occasionally giving them a treat isn't a bad idea, but these guys can sustain themselves mainly on dog and cat food with a little veggies mixed in. They're a really placid animal. They're really easy to keep. Probably the easiest lizard that I've ever kept. Now there are some downsides to them, but we'll get into that in the pros and cons. But regardless, these guys are live bearing animals and they'll have anywhere from eight babies all the way up into the low 20s, believe it or not. They are absolutely adorable and that telltale blue tongue is what makes them unbelievable. Certainly a pet lizard that you can consider if you ever want to start keeping a really cool animal. Very easy to care for. Don't require live foods. Extremely hardy. Low maintenance. Like to hide. Must keep claws trimmed or you'll get scratched. Captive born animals not as readily available as some of the other pet lizards. Now I'm not sure that I really consider chameleons a great pet, but I want to throw them in because they're a really great option, in particular for a really cool reptiles display lizard. They're pretty easy to care for if you have the proper setup. Now I'm not sure that I would ever consider them a first time reptile pet, but if you have some experience taking care of reptiles and have a really good setup for them, chameleons can be extremely hardy and extremely easy to care for. Now there's a bunch of different species of chameleons that are captive bred and born and are available, including this panther chameleon right here. His name is Karma, and he's absolutely incredible. Now, they're not necessarily a great handling animal, although I have seen some chameleons become pretty used to being handled. Mainly, I like them as a display animal and kind of leave them alone. I hardly ever take Karma out. Every now and then I do, but you can see he has a little bit of an attitude about it. Again, chameleons require a great setup, and they do require live food, but other than that, they can be really amazing animals and there's so much to choose from but certainly we have to take a look at the pros and the cons beautiful lizards with proper setup easy care lots of color options 
Not a beginner lizard. Setup more advanced. Not a handling lizard. Requires live food. So there you guys have it. The pros and cons to what I consider are some of the best pet reptiles. Now don't get me wrong, there's so many other options between snakes and lizards that you can choose from. So certainly don't think that this list is the only animals that are good pets because I could make a video that's an hour long just talking about how amazing so many reptiles are as pets. And Karma's getting a little bit cranky here. But guys, I'm always Facebook and tweeting and Instagramming my way through things. So make sure to follow me over at Snake Bites TV and tell next week you've been watching snake bites